So in this uh, video, we're going to show an example of uh, computing a higher order partial derivative. So in the previous two videos, we uh, calculated second partial derivatives or discussed second partial uh, derivatives. Um, there, there's no reason why we can't take third, uh, third order or fourth order or fifth order partial derivatives. We just extend the idea of taking a partial derivative in the natural way. So for example, if we wanted to calculate f, of f sub x, y, y, so in other words, take the partial derivative with respect to x first, then take the partial derivative of the, of the result with respect to y, so that would give us the mixed partial derivative f sub x, y, and then take the derivative with respect to y of that result. We just extend things in the natural way. So here's our function. So if I want to calculate f sub x of this function, we hold y constant and take the derivative with respect to x. So the derivative of the cosine function is minus the sine function. And then the chain rule would say I need to take the derivative of the stuff on the inside. I have a function composition. So the derivative of x times y with respect to x is just y. And then we're taking the derivative with respect to x, so we'll get minus. Uh, so the derivative of minus x cubed is going to become minus 3x squared, and the derivative of y to the fourth with respect to x is zero because we're holding y as a constant. So here I have uh, my f my first partial derivative with respect to x, and I can extend this and just calculate f sub x y, which means calculate the uh, partial derivative with respect to y of the partial derivative with respect to x. So now we take the previous result and take the derivative with respect to y. So I'm going to get minus parentheses. I have a product of two functions on the inside, so I'm going to need to use the product rule. So I take the derivative of the first function, so the derivative of the sine with respect to y is going to be cosine, cosine of x times y times, now I have to use the chain rule, I have a function inside a function, the derivative of x times y with respect to y, because we're holding x as a constant, is just going to be the, the derivative of x times y is just x with respect to y, plus, and now I'm doing the product rule on the product of these two functions, now I take the derivative of y with respect to y, which is 1, and multiply it by the other function, which is the sine of x, y. And then we take the derivative with respect to y of minus 3x squared, but because we're holding x as constant, the derivative of 3x squared is just 0. So I wind up just getting uh, what, I, what I see right here. And then if I calculate f sub x, y, y, this just says take the derivative with respect to y of the derivative f sub x, y, which is on the previous line. So we just keep going. We take the derivative of this function here with respect to y one more time. So I get my minus or my negative parentheses. Take the derivative of uh, x times the cosine of x, y with respect to y. If I'm taking the derivative with respect to y, I'm holding x as a constant. So the constant x times the derivative of the cosine, the derivative of the cosine is minus the sine of x times y. The derivative of, by the chain rule, the derivative of xy is just going to be x because we're treating x as a constant coefficient on y. So times x plus, now I take the derivative of the sine of xy with respect to y, so the derivative of the sine is the cosine, so we get cosine xy times the derivative of x times y with respect to y is just x. And then I probably want to clean things up a little bit, so if I distribute the negative in here, I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to get a negative times a negative is a positive, and then the negative and the plus are going to give me a negative right here. So I wind up with x times x, I wind up with an x squared sine xy minus an x cosine xy. And if I wanted to, I could factor that common x off and write it as x sine xy minus cosine xy.